Welcome back to the next installment of these uh, video lessons. I hope you are getting used to them and enjoying them. This time I'm going to talk to you about agriculture and industry in Australia. And just to make Rahim happy, I am going to try to be a little bit less boring with my voice. So here we go, agriculture and industry in Australia. First of all, we are going to talk about sheep farming. But uh, first I wanted to ask you a question. What are these words? Lamb, mutton and hogget. Lamb, you must have heard what a lamb was. A lamb is a young sheep who is younger than one year old. It's an interesting thing that it both refers to the meat and the animal. At the same time, a hogget is a sheep which is older than one year and a mutton, yes you guessed it right, is older than two years and mutton is not a word we use for the animal, we use it for the meat. So what is happening here? So as we know most, much of Australia is very very suitable for grazing lands. It's massive territory. It's about 55.6% of the whole territory of Australia. So more than half of the territory of Australia is ideal uh, vast inland grassland for sheep and cattle grazing. Most of this happens at sheep stations. Sheep stations are um, areas, uh, big farms where they keep uh, sheep and if you go to your book and uh, read the little story by Nigel on um, page 154 you can find out a lot about life at a sheep station. Um, sheep stations are basically uh, for two reasons. One is raising sheep for wool which is a major export product from Australia or for mutton for meat. The person who is in charge of a sheep farm or a sheep station is a grazier. Uh, according to the book, this is a word we use for uh, sheep uh, farmers. My wife, who is Australian, has never heard the word. Uh, in Australia, the practice is extensive grazing, as there are massive, massive, vast areas available for grazing, but there is not much grass, so it's not the lush grass fields that you can uh, think of uh, uh, when you think of Europe. An average farm, like the one described by Nigel, has about 25,000 animals, and it stretches over 100,000 acres. They are actually so big that the nearest neighbour, your next door neighbour, would be 300 kilometres away. There are about 150 million sheep living in Australia. If you remember, the population is uh, just around 25 million, so uh, that's a fairly big number of uh, of uh, sheep. They uh, use the word pasture. I was hoping you would know what the word pasture means. Pasture is basically the area of land where the animals graze. It's a lonely, hard, but at the same time nice life if that's your thing. Uh, one of the main activities obviously is shearing sheep. So when you cut the wool of a sheep it's called shearing. Here is a picture of a not so happy sheep being sheared. Uh, the only people you see apart from your family is probably seasonal workers when there is a lot of shearing to go or when there is a lot of uh, uh, sheep to be slaughtered you would have seasonal workers staying with you and enjoying living there. So what is the role of sheep in farming? Because from what I've to, uh, told you so far, it sounds like it's a really massive thing. Well, it still produces 1.7 billion euros worth of trade a year, which is pretty impressive. It's about 525,000 tons of wool. 
but it makes up only for about 6% of uh, Australia's national um, economy. This graph I thought I would show it to you is basically the amount of sheepskin and wool being sold from Australia. So you can see in the 1990s there was a big peak at about 1.4 million uh, tons, but it's been going down quite steadily and uh, it seems to sort of uh, level out at about uh, at just below 800,000 tons a year. Here I thought I would put together a little bit of a graph. Well, I stole it from uh, uh, Wikipedia obviously, but you can see quite clearly what the main source of uh, income, uh, national income are. And as you can see, cattle is still a number one, so I don't really understand why uh, it wasn't cattle that we looked at in this uh, course book uh, unit. Uh, and strictly followed by wheat and uh, uh, wheat, milk, fruits and nuts and vegetables and wool, the topic of today's lesson is just the next one it's about 2.138 billion dollar business according to our book uh, which is a little bit higher number than uh, what the course book suggests when it said it was 1.7 billion euros though uh, probably it's a it's a, yeah it's probably right because this is in Australian dollars and the figure was in euros so that's about right I think sorry uh, anyway so um, it's all about wool uh, you can uh, also see, I just thought I would put this here up there, this is another interesting uh, graph that shows the number of people living from agriculture. It's going down uh, quite steadily, started out in the, between 316 and 380,000 uh, people, and a population of 20, uh, 23 million, uh, just to remind you. Uh, and it's gone down to about um, 280,000 by the mid-2010s, uh, so just about recently with a little bit of projection for 2014-2015. Anyway, let's go look at the other uh, part, which is also just as exciting as, uh, as wool production, only probably even more, and that's mineral and... Uh, energy resources in Australia. Well, everybody knows about coal. Coal is incredibly important. It basically fuels all the uh, electricity powered stations in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. Uh, it makes up about 75% of uh, the uh, urban energy electricity uh, in these three uh, territories, so it's massive. Another important resource is of course iron ore, and another important contributing factor in uh, populating the country and in uh, working the uh, settling the country was the 1850s gold rush uh, that we talked about in the previous lesson. Uh, Australia has also got a vast oil reserves in the area called the Bass Strait. I'm sorry about the quality of the image, but it's, you can probably figure out that the arrow points between the uh, territory uh, at the territory between uh, Tasmania and New South Wales. So that's the area where uh, most of the oil is, and the gas. Most of the gas, the gas fields are in Western Australia, offshore Western Australia. Uh, you will need this answer for more of my questions. And uh, because of the uh, availability of uh, iron and iron ore and coal in the area, Sydney has become the centre of uh, iron and steel production. 
So, mining is a very, very important factor in the Australian economy. It makes up about 50% of the uh, export income of the country. Being a vast country with a small population, they don't use up most of, uh, all of their uh, mining product. It uh, serves as a very strong export product. Um, many reasons, but I've, uh, I would like to highlight three. Uh, production of uh, coal is relatively cheap. Uh, open cast mines like the one in this picture, not the most beautiful scenes, but it's a uh, cheap production uh, on a massive scale. The availability of bauxite, uh, which is the main ingredient for aluminium, aluminium, as you like to pronounce it, are very important factors. And here, as you can see, these are the uh, mining industry output uh, and uh, the world ranking. Again, you can find this uh, chart in your course books on page 157. So let's, let's look at some quiz questions for you just to make you happy. I would like you to try and remember what the three, these three numbers refer to. 6%, 150 million and 55.6%. Second question, what is mutton? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Number three, which aspect of living on a sheep station would you find most difficult and why? So this is your own personal reflection writing. I would like you to write about 40, 50, 60 words, perhaps. Um, very simple, straightforward question about the industry. Where is the center of iron and steel industry? And the last question is, where can you find Australia's biggest gas fields? I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I'm going to show you the project work that you are going to work uh, on tomorrow, which is uh, investigating one of the four topics, um, whichever you choose, life in a sheep station, or animal rights and food safety in Australia. There are a lot of concerns, a lot of interesting debates. Pollution in Australia, which comes from uh, obviously from the industrialization, and as we've seen the steady decline in sheep farming. What do you think, or what uh, what does research tell you about the future of sheep farming in Australia? And with all that, thank you very very much for your attention, and I hope to see you in class on Thursday. Bye.